Good afternoon, everyone. And you're all welcome. We come here this day to uh, say our final goodbyes to, uh, to Tommy Clear, uh, a long-standing parishioner, a man of great faith over a lifetime. And uh, just before we enter into our requiem <coughs> mass for Tommy, uh, Tommy's daughter, Emma, will now come and speak. We are here to celebrate the life of one of the most senior members of this parish, Tommy Clear, in his 91st year. My father grew up in Coolamick into a very different Ireland of 1930. He remained at home and lived in this parish of Oilgate all his life. He took the pledge at 14 and wore his pioneer's pin with pride. He did, however, believe in both whiskey and poutine for medicinal purposes, which we, his family, may have often benefited from. His knowledge of the locality was unequalled and people visit, visited him from as far away as Australia and America to inquire about long lost relatives. Some even kept in touch and sent him posts from across the world. <clears throat> Tommy's detailed recollections of bygone years was another one of his talents. Many of his memories were recorded a few years ago by Southeast Radio and are archived in Enniscorthy Library, something he was very proud of. Friendship was important to him throughout his life. He made connections as far away as Salmon's Low Horse Fair, which he attended annually. <clears throat> Tommy's knowledge extended well beyond people, of course. He was well known for his incredible animal cures and remedies. With those successful remedies, we think Tommy, our father, discovered a potion for a long and healthy life, which was his love of goat's milk. In recent years, we could barely keep the fridge stocked with it, such was his love of the stuff. And although we will certainly miss him, his loss will be dead deeply felt by the Irish goat milking community. We, his family, are very proud to have had a father who was called on by so many farmers, both near and far away, for his help with their sick animals. <clears throat> I think we'd all agree that Tommy had a better memory than any detective. We often thought in another life he would have entered the guards himself. How proud he was to see my brother Tommy Jr. progress to become a detective in time. <clears throat> Tommy, like his siblings, had a very distinctive laugh. He used to get a great kick out of people mistaking him for a young James Cagney. He was even known to have gone to the pictures to see a couple of his movies. Tommy and I, luckily, are old enough to appreciate the benefits of having a father of Tom Senior's generation. His many uses of turpentine, for example, <laughs> would stay with us forever. <clears throat> Tom Senior was a man of great strength. He passed his driving test at 86, drove himself to Mass until three weeks ago, and was out looking at the spuds in the garden just the other day. When any of us left the house, he'd tell us to mind that car and remind us about the holy water. It was his way of telling us to stay safe. He had his dignity to the end, and his belief in prayer and faith always supported him and we know it will continue to do so now. Our debt to Gareva Adam, rest in peace. So we thank you, Emma, for that tribute to your father. We all stand and we begin our past. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our Mass this day is for the uh, happy repose of the soul of Tommy Clear. He has now gone back to God, the God who gave him life all those years ago. And in faith, our hope is for new life and eternal life in the heavenly home, the new home, the, the place that God has prepared for him. We always ask that God's help and strength in difficult times, as we do today for the family, we ask of God's mercy to be part of our lives. And for that we pray together. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I gravely sin in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault. And therefore I ask the blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, my brothers and sisters, May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And glory to God in the highest, on an earth of peace and people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, mercy in us. Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy in us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you will honor the most high Christ with the Holy Spirit. Glory to God, Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, Tommy, who has fallen asleep in Christ, May rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now take our seats. <laughs> We are, have a reading now from, from the Word of God, and the reading that has been chosen by the family today, it's about time and all the different aspects of time that happen in people's lives. So we will listen to that reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a season for everything, a time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for planting, a time for uprooting, a time for building, a time for tearing down, a time for sorrow, and a time for joy. A time for mourning, a time for dancing, a time for embracing, a time to refrain from embracing, a time for finding and a time for losing, a time for saving and a time for throwing away, a time for mending, a time for tearing, a time for keeping silent and a time for speaking, a time for conflict, a time for peace. What does a man gain from the efforts that he makes? I contemplate the task that God gives mankind to labour at. 
All that he does is apt for its time. But though he has permitted man to consider time in its wholeness, man cannot comprehend the work of God from beginning to end. The word of the Lord. Your response is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures, where he gives me repose. Near the restful waters he leads me, to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. <coughs> Let us stand to acclaim now the gospel. Come you now, who my Father has blessed, inherit the foundation, the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation. The Lord be with you. Our reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Amos seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognizing him. And he said to them, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things, they asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened. And some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they'd seen the vision who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported. Then he said to them, you foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? And then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, 
he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said. The day is almost over. And so he went in to stay with them. Now while he was at, with them at the table, he took bread and said a blessing, and he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And this is the gospel of the Lord. Take your seats for a moment. We all know that uh, Tommy Clear was, was a man that was, was known near and far. And uh, even so, his passing hits his family most. Any passing of anybody, it's always the family that we have to think of first today. And uh, as family, you will miss Tommy greatly. You've had him for a long time. He's been blessed with a long life in the world. And because you've had him so long, his passing will probably be all the more difficult because the gap, the presence that was there for such a long time in the home uh, will be absent. The chair will be empty. And so all of our thoughts today have to be with, with Clara, with Tommy and Emma, Kira and David, and indeed the extended family to all of Tommy's nephews and nieces as well. So uh, we always think of the family unit and their sorrow and their grieving on this day. We know that Tommy had a long life, we heard something a little there from Emma earlier on about all the different happenings and different bits and bits and pieces and his life, the life of over 90 years has spanned many decades and it is a life that, that would have seen many changes along the way uh, throughout the decades and uh, he was a man my sentiment of him is, and uh, I wouldn't know him that well, I've only known him, I, I wouldn't know him that well, but uh, he embraced things as they came along. Uh, he was always, he was sending new people far and wide. He was always a great interest in people, I think. And he had a great interest in people's stories and uh, so he had an awful lot of information going back over a long time. He had a great store of information on people. He interacted well in that regard and uh, from the brief acquaintances that I would have had with him and they're only brief, he um, he was a man who possessed great, a great skill of inquiry. There was always a lot of questions. So uh, when you met him, by the time he was finished with you, he had got, he had got a good idea of things. He had got a great store of information. I don't think he got that much out of me now. <laughs> he, did, he did try hard. So uh, he was in farming, we hear there about the different things, but he'd have probably made it better to take them to go the end. But anyway, that, that inquiring mind, I guess, kind of 
It encapsulates his whole interest in people, wherever they were near and far, and he had that great store of information. And uh, like I said, today we, we think, first of all, of the family and their grief and their sorrow, and the empty chair that remains, but then a, a wider, in the wider scope of things, we think of all the people that Tommy encountered throughout the course of his long life, down through the decades, and he embraced them all. He was interested in whoever he met, in whatever shape and form it was. And he, he did get the great store of knowledge and information and all, all that went with it as well. And uh, people of Tommy's gen generation, like I said, they witnessed great change in, in the course of their lives. If you go back to Tommy's very early days, back to the 1930s, it's the country, the culture, everything was very different as we experience it in our present time. So there was a great, a great loss of change to be dealt with and, and to get over, you know, over, over the course uh, of that life. So like I, I said, he was a, a man with great skills of inquiry, you could say, he nearly come piled a dossier on everyone he encountered. So uh, he was well known and uh, like Emma said, he had special interests in different things and people got to know him through all of that and uh, he will be fondly remembered, I'm sure, uh, for all of that as well. And uh, in the mix of all of that, then, he was also a man of great faith. His faith in God was not just very, it was all important. And I think uh, <clears throat> someone said to me, one of the family said to me that, that coming here on Sunday, here at the Mass, was, it was the central focus of his week. It was key to everything. And for one who had seen great change, that was the one constant, the one thing that, that was there throughout the long years of his life. He was always here, there at the back of the church on Sundays, and he was always early as well. I never, he was always there early. So in early for things. He wasn't a last minute man rushing in for things or anything like that. So uh, he was there and uh, his faith was important. It was, whether it, it was important, I guess, his faith back in, in 1952, if we go back 70 years, he was here, I'm sure, then on Sundays. It's a long way back. But faith was important in most people's lives back then. But still back in 2022, if we come to the present time, it still was important. Even in the present day with all the changes and all the movements and everything else that had washed through time and culture, his faith was still strong and still important. And we heard there in, that, in the reading there from scripture about all the different things in time, all the different things that happen in people's lives, the different events, the different things that come our way. That, that too was, was all part uh, of Tommy's life, all very part of his life. But like I said, he embraced it, he went with it. And uh, his faith in God, it, it, it stood him in good stead uh, throughout uh, the course of his life. And uh, today in the Gospel there, we have the, there the uh, account of the, the two travelers on, on the road to Amos, and the stranger comes along, 
and uh, they don't recognize him. And uh, for talking about all the happenings that had happened, about the man that had died on the cross a few days earlier, and uh, be known to them, uh, the one who, who had died on the cross was the one who was walking with them, the stranger on the road, and they only recognized him when he went in and sat down and broke the bread. And uh, they knew then that he had risen from the dead. So our whole purpose in being here today is, is, is that same hope of resurrection. And, and that is the hope in faith that we have for Tommy Clear. And uh, it is a, it's, a, it's a hope that he maintained uh, throughout the course of his life. That's important to think about and to reflect on. He kept that hope there, whatever came along. And uh, today, on the Sunday Mass, today we, we celebrate in the feast of the body and blood of the Lord. And uh, this is what happened in this story on the road to a mosque when the bread was broken, the body and blood of the Lord became present there. It's present in all the masses that we celebrate. It was present, the body and blood of the Lord was present in every mass that Tommy Clear attended over his life. And uh, that's why, because God was present, his coming was something of great value. It was, it was worth being present at, because God would give him the gift of himself. And uh, he was one who kept coming back for it. He came for 90. <clears throat> 90 years. So it, it is a long record of receiving of the gift that God puts before us. <clears throat> and this is where everything comes together. You see, it all comes together here in the end. And here we are today, we're celebrating the Eucharist the body and blood of the Lord become present. It's all coming together. This is what it's all about when it all comes in. Like I said, Tommy kept coming. You couldn't keep him away. You couldn't keep him out of here. As long as he was standing, he was here. Up to two or three Sundays ago. So if we, if we have any lesson, of all the lessons, and all the investigations that he did, and all the knowledge and everything that people have gleaned <coughs> from his life. <clears throat> I think there is a great lesson worth pondering on, on all the times he came here. That is, 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 is the, great, the great mystery of it all. So today, after it all, it, it, it was a long life put our lives, no matter how long they are, and Tommy's was a long one, they're not in, in the overall expanse of time that we exist in. And that's why the time beyond this time, the eternal time, which is outside space and time as we know it in the here and the now, that is the great thing worth capturing that Tommy kept going after through the years. So today we, we acknowledge his life, all that he brought, all the knowledge and stories and everything that he brought to people, to family and to people far and wide. He brought a lot. And probably like he did try his best perhaps to try and become the person that God intended him to be in life through faith. May he now rest in peace. Amen. We will stand and...
Do we have that prepared prayers of the faithful? So we we'll come now to the prayers. We are made in the image and likeness of God. As trusting people, we now make our prayers in faith. We pray for my Father, who is past in his life. May he now enjoy the last of peace of heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the tormented brothers and sisters. Today we pray for his parents, Thomas and Ellen, and his siblings, Nancy, Mariah, John, Martin, and Michael. May Thomas be reunited with them in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the family and friends of Thomas in these difficult days. May the Lord be their strength and salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all of those who are sick and the medical staff who dedicate themselves to their care. In particular, we pray for all the staff at Wexford General Hospital for their care of Thomas. Lord, hear us. Graciously hear us. We pray for the farming community as they continue to work hard to bring us food. Bless them as they care for their livestock and begin to harvest their crops. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <clears throat> Eternal God, as Saint Augustine taught us, you have made us for yourself alone. And our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Secure in this knowledge, we ask you to grant these prayers in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now offer up the gifts of bread and wine. <coughs> to be a loving Saviour, may find in him a merciful judge, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up 
your hearts and let us uh, give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready in heaven. So with angels and archangels and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we declaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O John of Christ. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray thee, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, to take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice, my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of the sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. And therefore, as we, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her into the fullness of charity together. Francis, our Pope, Jer, our Bishop, all the clergy and faithful. Remember Tommy Clear, who you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. <clears throat> Remember also our brothers and sisters. Uh, we remember Tommy's parents and his own siblings who have gone before him, all who have fallen asleep in hope of resurrection, and all who have 
died in your mercy. It welcomed them into the light of your face. Mercy on us all, we pray with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have uh, pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We will stand and, uh, and at the Savior's command, for by the, uh, the sacred teachings, we dare to say together, our Father, our Father. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, temptation, and so uh, deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by is the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from, from all the stress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Kingdom power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, make your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We can turn to door those around us and just acknowledge peace. <laughs> Lama God. Take away the sins of the world, mercy in us. Mercy on us. God, take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Let us uh, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world and blessed are, are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, only to say the word of my soul. <laughs> Coming to receive Holy Communion, you come up the center aisle on the side you're on and then return to the seat by the wall. <coughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray now. Lord God, who 
whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant us strength and by it, Tommy may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord be with you. And God bless us, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us remain now in the peace of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. So just before our final prayers and removal, the family have just asked me to say a word of thanks on their behalf and to everybody who uh, helped them out in any way over the past few days, over the past while, uh, whether they be neighbours or friends or wherever, uh, their nephews and nieces for all the help given, and uh, also to the staff in Wexford uh, General Hospital for all that care, and uh, anybody that helped out in any way there behind the scenes that we don't often see out front. They thank the choir here for, for coming today to sing uh, for Tommy's Mass, and uh, thank them for all of that. And uh, I would just like to thank the uh, ministers of the Eucharist for giving up their time for coming here on Sunday uh, for, for to help out here around the altar and all of that as well. So uh, the family say to one and to all, thanks for all the help given in whatever shape or form. And uh, they invite anyone who can, who's in a position to do so, and uh, after the burial there are refreshments in the community centre. So uh, it just remains for us, all our sympathies today are with the family on this uh, sad time of loss. So we now proceed with our, our final prayers. Today, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of Tommy. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hopes. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. We take a few moments in quiet thought and prayer. Receive his soul, present him to God the Most High. <clears throat> the saints of God come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Amen. 
seeks souls. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon him, seeks his soul. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend Tommy in the sure and the certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to him and help us to remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we meet in Christ and are with you and with Tommy forever. Amen. Tommy, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you, take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. And may you have eternal rest. It is in peace now, let us take Tommy to his uh, place of rest. Yeah. 